way, way more forgiving than I am. Way more forgiving than I am, I'm telling you. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 12, episode 7. As I said, way more forgiving than I am. It's That's one of my little isms. Is I, I'm not, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. I am not a very forgiving person. Um, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Anyway, first thing. Kenya and Cynthia. Kenya comes over to Cynthia's house. They're actually going through. Cynthia is trying to make closet space for Mike. And um, it didn't seem that bad at first. But the more they continued on, you found out she has like three closet spaces. And when she got the further she got in, they were worse and worse and worse. She went, and the last room was just shit everywhere. I was like, okay, Cynthia. She's like, well, maybe I am a bit of a hoarder. I, I mean, I don't know that you're a hoarder. You just got a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was that last room was a mess. I said, did we do this for Rava? I was just shit in the middle of the floor. I said, well, Okay, girl, I guess. She'll figure it out. Anyway, they start talking about uh, Marlo. And she's really wondering whether or not Marlo is the one who supposedly did these infamous recordings. And she was saying that she didn't get a chance to ask Marlo at the little function, you know, because Kenya came in with her marching band and all of that. And it just, you know, she just never got around to asking her. So... Now, I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm going to just go ahead and hope that this is just about a storyline. But, Cynthia, you seem a bit, like, you seem so bothered by it. What did you say, girl? What have you said? You know what I mean? Is there something that you said that you really can't repeat? See, that's why I don't, I don't get into that. If I say it once, I'll say it ten times. If you don't say anything that you don't want to repeat, then you don't have these problems. You don't have to be walking around all nervous and running your blood pressure up. You know, it really is easier to have a policy of, yeah, I said it, and that works. That that keeps your blood pressure down. Trust. Keeps your blood pressure down. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking either this is just for television or Cynthia has said something that she don't want. Repeat it. So which is it? Anyway, moving on. Candy and Carmen get together and we're talking about Candy and what's going on in her house. Um, I don't know that your blended family is really sound a little messy over there. I like y'all, you know, like y'all waiting on the other shoe to drop. Because well, she says basically that Riley and Kayla don't, they don't deal with each other. And she was saying, you know, do because they're both going to New York. And she's like, they're both going to be in New York. Do you think that they're going to basically see each other or hang out? She's like, they didn't hang out and didn't talk when they were right here in the house together. So heck, no, they ain't going to hang out. I was like, okay. And then she started talking about how <clears throat> Riley... Basically, like, Riley don't see it for Kayla. She don't see it for Todd. She don't, she just, you know, whatever. She says she's the kid that's like, he ain't my daddy. And I'm like, you got all that going on. I don't know how you sitting up talking about you got a successful blended family. No, y'all just are like pleasant roommates, but that don't sound like no successful blended family. That sounds like pleasant roommates. You know, it, child, it'd take one thing to go on and watch that, that household separate down the middle. Y'all better get a hold on that mess. Todd and Candy gets arguing. You'll see the whole house separate down the middle. Anyway, moving on, child. Portia and Marlo. 
they go for one of those pedaling tours where you're on the little thing and you pedal and it rides around the city and you get drunk. Basically, we have them here, little pedaling tours. And uh, the first thing they did was they actually ran into Gary with the T. Um, he was driving by like pedaling horse. <laughs> He looked up at them like, yeah, okay, y'all. And uh, they ended up, that Marlo set it up. Of course, you know, she is an advocate for Dennis. She she wants them together. So she's like, rah, rah, sis, kumba, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. They done rode on past the hot dog place and went on in and had a hot dog. I was like, mm hmm So you're, you're open. You're open to the idea of Dennis. And that's cool. She's definitely pushing for Dennis. I was like, all right. Then we've seen this whole little thing with uh, Mimi and T Tamara, her life coach. Why? Why do you have a life coach, Dee? Why do you have a life coach? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't see the purpose. I think it's a lot of wasted money because you sitting up with a life coach and you being just as mean and hate for it, backhanded and sideways as you ever been. You still plots, plans, and do all this little vindictive stuff, and you still run around with your nose all in the air. So, what is it that we're paying the life coach for? I digress, Joe. I don't see it. I thought the life coach was supposed to add to the quality of a uh, child lesson. This ain't nothing but add to the quality of your screen time because I don't see you being any different than what you've been. Seems like a lot of wasted money to me and a storyline. Moving on. Kayla and Candy. Um... Kayla, we, they showed the day that Kayla's actually going ahead and going off to New York. Taught nowhere to be found. So we're just going to go ahead and say that Todd's at work. But remember, Todd works for Todd. So Todd can be off when Todd wants to be off. Candy seeing Kayla off. And she was saying, you know, she was a little bit nervous, you know, and different things like that. But that chump. Now, and no, no, Kayla, Todd found out about Kayla. He wasn't a wit Kayla when she was a baby, if I'm not. Sadly mistaken. I think he found out about her. She was already like maybe a teenager or preteen when he found out that he even had her. And I'm wondering, is there like a little resentment or something there? Because he just doesn't seem that into her. Like, like yeah, okay, whatever. You exist. And it's just kind of how it comes off. Oh, that's weird. You don't see fathers and their daughters with that type of relationship. I don't know. But somebody put it in the comments. Did he? he I don't think he was around in the first part of her life. I think he found out, if, if I remember correctly, he found out about Kayla later on. She was already established and she's already a little kid. So I don't know. It just it just seems so weird to me. Very, very weird. And then his, he's not like that with Ace at all. At all. It's strange. It's strange. He even seems more attentive to Riley than he does to her. And Candy didn't already told y'all. He Riley don't see it for him. I don't know. And maybe they just too much alike. Because she has a very dismissive per personality too. Like, get yeah, the hell with you. So maybe that's where they maybe they bump heads or something. I don't know. But it just seems really strange to me. Anyway, moving on. So we had a double date with Eva and Cynthia and both of the mics. And they're talking about um they're talking about engagement and living arrangements and weird. That's weird too. Like when people talk about engagement, it's weird to me. Oh, we're considering getting engaged. What? Who does that? How are you consider getting engaged? At the moment that you consider getting engaged, you give the girl a ring. That's it. There ain't no conversations about it. There's one conversation. Will you marry me? Yes or no? All this going around and around talking with other people and, 
and all of this. And then y'all are talking with other people together. That's the strange part. What in getting engaged is not a group effort. It's one person decides to propose to the other and the other person says yes or no. It really doesn't get all that deep. All these conversations and all of this going around, y'all are already talking about living arrangements and all of that. Like, weird. Very strange. Anyway, um, but Mike actually said, Mike Hill was actually stating how he felt about the whole recording thing. And he told them under no uncertain terms, whoever recorded you basically is a piece of shit. I agree. I agree. Because that's that that recording people stuff is just ridiculous. But again, if you just say what you mean and mean what you say, you ain't got no problems. Anyway, moving on. Kenya. Kenya that messed up. Kenya that messed up. Kenya was down seeing an attorney. Kenya don't have no prenup. And now your life is in shambles and you got this baby. And now you're down here at the attorney's office trying to make certain that all of your stuff goes to your daughter. And then you have to try to find out um, when they brought up the whole thing of a trustee, now you over there crying and carrying on because we already know Kenya has a life where she kind of is in it. There's some people around her, but I don't think there's anybody really in her life that she even feels comfortable making a trustee over her daughter. So, see, these are some of the decisions and some of the things that should have been being covered before you even got married, before you decide to have this baby, because now you got a whole mess going on and you didn't have a baby with a man that you don't even trust to do right by your daughter when you close your eyes and go to the dirt. That's a bad place to be. That says that you didn't mate very well. You laid down and made a baby with a man that you don't even feel comfortable leaving your, your child with. And I mean, I understand it because we don't really know Mark, but we know he don't like Kenya. We know he doesn't like Kenya. He does seem to like Brooklyn a whole, whole lot. He likes his baby, but he don't like that baby's mama. And then the thing is, she talking about her assets. Her home is worth $1.8 million. And the thing is, he has other children. See, that's where her issue is. Don't take my stuff and be taking care of your other kids off my daughter's stuff. And I, now I feel that. I feel that I would haunt his ass. Do you understand me? Baby, I'd be jingling chains down at the head of his bed every night, honey. Ching a lang a lang, a lang a lang. I sure would. I ooh, that would be a mess. That's like that's a horrible thought. Now this is time with her in the crying, I understood it. Cause you in between the rock and a hard place. And this ain't cute. This ain't cute at all. And that's what the lady said. Well, she seen the attorney. So he seems to have all of his own stuff. She said, yeah, and that could change tomorrow. That could change tomorrow. See, my house is already here. Already got it and already paid for it. But see, his little stuff, that little restaurant, child, they can stop making hamburgers tomorrow, Eddie. Right? And you think you're going to take care of you and your kids off of my kids' money? No, God. So I understood. Them tears, I understood. But that's the girl... Child, listen, whenever you go to crossover, sis, make sure you ask the man upstairs to get you an extra long chain, honey, so you can jangle lang a lang a lang honey, and haunt that mother. Listen, anyway, moving on, I, I felt bad for her in this one. It's like, you messed up. Anyway, moving on, Portia and Dennis. Now, this is where I was talking about forgiveness. Dennis shows up. At Dr. Sher Dr. Sherry's office. Actually, they showed up together, but they showed them coming in separately. But we saw at the end that they basically came together. Whatever. 
um, something that me and Portia actually agreed on, which I don't generally agree with stuff with Portia. She says she feels insulted every time he says he made a mistake whenever he cheated. And I agree. You ain't made no damn mistake. You went and screwed. You didn't make a mistake. You made a decision. You made a decision that you cheated. And you cheated. And not only did you cheat, you got caught. Okay? So ain't no mistake. You're not taking ownership of what it was that you did. How do you get to forgiveness sitting across from a clown that ain't taking ownership? I don't think so. She's better than me because I'd have already had my purse and I'd have been at the door. I probably would have mugged him in his face again like she did at the first session. Then he's literally sitting in her face blaming her pregnancy, the troubles in her pregnancy, which you the one that got me pregnant, and the postpartum afterwards, which you're the one who got me pregnant. You're blaming those things for the reason that you cheated. See, then I would have switched from mugging him in the face to punching him in the face. You so hot in your ass that you can't roll with me through this. You got to go bang on somebody else. Though you, you're the one that got me pregnant. Yeah, okay. All right, bruh. <laughs> okay, bruh. I hit him all upside his head with my purse. And then I'm listening to her, and she keeps using PJ as another method to build guilt. But he don't feel guilty. He feels sorry. Not sorry that he did it. Sorry that he got caught. And after the postpartum, and after the pregnancy, you continue to cheat. I want to hear none of that stuff. Dennis needs to go somewhere and sit down. But it seems as though Portia is going to fall for it. So that's fine. But she's much more forgiving than I. I would have punched Dennis right in his forehead and left an egg on his forehead. Yuck! Every time he talk about it, I sock him because he's just full of crap. Um, mm -mm, I, mm -mm. No, this ain't got nothing to do with PJ. None of it. None of this has to do with PJ. This has to do with Dennis and his member. That's it. Ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. Not no goddamn PJ. Ding-a-ling. Ding-a-ling and Dennis. That's, that's what this is about. Ding-a-ling, Dennis, and Portia. Ain't got nothing to do with baby PJ at all. Anyway, moving on. They left together. And he telling her, you look you look nice today. Thank you. Can I come over? That, that ding a -ling right at it again. Child, please. I, girl, I'd have pulled over to the side of the road. Yacka! And I'd have left another egg on his forehead. Child, he'd be all lumped up playing around with me. Ain't nobody got time for that mess. Anyway, that's what they got. Portia, girl, you're much more forgiving than I. You go on with yourself. Good for you.